In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, uh, a short time before I started for the vigil grounds, Our Lady instructed me to carry a copy of the Bible with me. And when I reached the grounds, I was to read from Romans 1. In our world today, there are many who do not read or know the words of the Bible. Many other things, the abominations being committed in the world today, have been spoken of in the Bible and proven beyond a doubt that man is following a complete road to his own destruction by his actions. And the greatest curse upon mankind now is sin. Now, in Romans 1, it speaks of a humanity without Christ. In our present world, man is trying to create an image that has no no uh, representation to a God, a real God, but he is creating an image of man as a God using humanity and hum uh, humanness, a false front that basically is evil. We can, Our Lady said, feed the body and starve the soul. And the world goes about now trying to bring, they say, they cry peace and goodness to mankind, but there will be no peace until man turns to his God and stops his worship of idols and the creation of idols. And they do not have to be only graven images of stone and wood, but idolatry is being practiced when a man seeks to make a god of himself, a worship of the body, as we see now in the blatant outpouring of sex leading to immorality, paganism, and all forms of despicable evils. Now, reading from Romans, it speaks of this humanity, man without Christ. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of those men who in wickedness hold back the truth of God from mankind, seeing that what may be known about God is manifest to them, for God has manifested it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, his everlasting power also and divinity, being understood through the things that are made. And so they are without excuse, seeing that although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or give thanks but became vain in their reasonings, and their senseless minds have been darkened. For while professing to be wise, these scholars and scientists and even pastors, they have become fools, and they have changed the glory of the incorruptible God for an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things, Therefore, God has given them up in the lustful desires of their heart to uncleanness, so that they dishonor their own bodies among themselves. They who exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God has given them up to shameful lust. For their women have exchanged the natural use for that which is against nature. And in like manner, the men also, having abandoned the natural use of the woman, have burned in their lust one towards another, men with men, 
doing shameless things and receiving in themselves the fitting recompense of their perversity. And as they have resolved against possessing the knowledge of God, God has given them up to a reprobate sense so that they do what is not fitting, being filled with all manner of iniquity and malice, immorality, avarice, wickedness, being full of envy, murder, contention, deceit, malignity, being whisperers and gossipers, detractors and hateful to God, irreverent, proud, haughty, plotters of evil, and disobedient to parents, foolish, desolate, without affection, without fidelity, without mercy. Although they have known the ordinance of God, were taught and trained even, they have not understood that those who practice such things are deserving of death. And not only do they do these things, but they afford others doing them. In other words, in simple language, homosexuality is an abomination in the eyes of God. And women who replace their roles as mothers and women in the homes and who cast aside their rightful places as mothers and as teachers of children, leading them to their God. They have cast aside their roles as ordained from the beginning of time by God the Creator. And as such, they shall receive a just chastisement. Veronica Lucan, the Sierra of Bayside, New York, was a wife and a mother of five children. She went to her eternal reward on August 3, 1995. St. Teresa, the little flower, promised to greet her with a bouquet of red roses when she arrived in heaven. Our Lady appeared to Veronica in her home on April 7, 1970, informing her that she would appear on the grounds of the old St. Robert Bellarmine Church on June 18, 1970, that vigils of prayer be held there, now temporarily held at the Vatican Pavilion site in Flushing Meadows Park, and that full directions be given to the clergy of the parish to prepare for Our Lady's first visit there. Our Lady also requested that a shrine and basilica be erected on her chosen sacred site, which is to be named Our Lady of the Roses, Mary, Help of Mothers. She promised to come on the eve of great feast days of the Church. The Blessed Mother also instructed Veronica to disseminate the message given to her throughout the whole world. Our Lady has requested that the rosary be recited aloud by the crowd during the whole of the vigil. All are requested to kneel in the presence of Jesus. The message was repeated word by word by Veronica. Veronica also described what she saw. All has been recorded on audio tape. 